Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Ahkab SOS, the Ramadan special. Insha'Allah, your Ramadan is filled with taqwa and also tawfiq, insha'Allah. And insha'Allah, you are seeking the benefits and advantages of this month. As we continue with the Ahkam of uh, Ramadan by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, we'll be looking at what qualifies you to fast, insha'Allah, myself, most insha'Allah, and with Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi so, Sheikhna, what are the criteria uh, for fasting? What makes someone um, qualify to be able to fast in Ramadan? A'udhu billah as-sami'a al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa alihi muhammad The first criteria for, for the one to begin his fast and the main condition and the main basis for an individual to begin his fast is Islam. He must be Muslim and have the shahadatain to have the ibad accepted because without Islam, even if they were from different religions, that ibadah that Allah wanted would not be accepted. They have to have the shahadatain, the revert for example, those who convert to Islam, and then they can fast like us. In, in other words, if you are not Muslim, then the fasting won't be accepted as ibadah from Allah SWT. So, Shaykh, if uh, we have a Christian or a Jew, and he decides that he's going to also fast in the month of Ramadan, the same way the Muslims do, in order for him to uh, connect and gain closeness to his own Lord, which happens to be the same one we all worship, Alhamdulillah, we all worship the um, creator of Adam alayhi salam. So, will that not be accepted without the acceptance that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was the final messenger? You see, all the ibadat, from prayers, from fasting, from hajj, all these rituals, um, which are under the banner of Islam, would not be accepted from any individual unless they submit to Allah, and to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, the Shahadatain. Now I'll come to the rest of the conditions. So this is the main thing, to submit to Allah and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's message. It's very important. If you, if you disagree with them, if you don't accept them, then uh, the A'mal won't be accepted. Mm -hmm. So Allah wants submission to his religion. Even if you were uh, pious in your own religion, that particular amal, and deed, which is fasting, Allah wants it from the mu'mineen. What was the ayah I mentioned in the first episode? Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as siyam Those who believe mm -hmm. uh, fasting became obligatory, prescribed, prescribed on them. Yeah. Bec becomes wajib for the mu'min. Yes. You could have said, ya ayyuhal nas, all humanity, people. all people. Ah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. You believe in Allah first, you submit to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa then you can begin um, fasting, praying, and Allah will accept insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. So that's the first condition, Islam, to be a Muslim. So the second attached condition to Islam is the faith. Ya ayyuhal amanu. What does the faith or Iman mean here? We have Islam and we have Iman. The Iman here, it means the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt of uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa The wilaya of Amir Mun Ali Islam. The wilaya of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib Alayhi Islam. That's the core <laughs> and that's the basis of religion. One of the yes. usul al-deen. <laughs> part of the usul al-deen to believe in the Ahlul Bayt, the Imam and the Khilaf of Ahlul Bayt Alayhi Islam. So that's an important condition as well, not only Islam. Yeah, the shahadit are the main, the main doors to access and to enter into Islam. But also the Imam of Ahlul Bayt, who comes after the Prophet? 
Is it the enemies of Ahlul Bayt? No. We reject them. And we submit and believe in the progeny of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Imams of Ahlul Bayt. The 12 or the 12 Imams of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa sallam. I think it's, it's important here to mention is that this rule was introduced by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi himself at Ghadir where he mentioned the importance of accepting the wilaya and that the deeds of the Muslims would not be accepted. So it's not that we've come up with this randomly or this is the view of, of, of the Sayyid himself, but this is the view of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Well, basically this is the Islam. This is the basis and the foundation of Islam that we have Usul al-Din. If you reject Usul al-Din, your amal won't be accepted. The deeds won't be accepted. So the one who is fasting but does not acknowledge and accept and submit to the wilayah of Ahlul Bayt after the Prophet as vicegerents, as imams, as uh, khulafa, then his fasting won't be accepted at all. And the rest of the amal. I have a narration, interesting, from Muhammad bin Muslim, one of the trustees and important and pious um, narrators of Ahlul Bayt He says, سمعت أبا جعفر عليه السلام يقول he said I heard that Imam Al Baqir Abu Jafar عليه السلام saying كل من دان الله عز وجل بعبادة whoever seeks nearness to Allah closeness to Allah with a worship يجهد فيها نفسه he struggles and he makes himself tired and exhausted by that ibadah, you know, worshipping at night, fasting during the day, and so forth. وَلَا إِمَامَ لَهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ But he does not submit any imams which were appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أي أهل البيت عليهم السلام, فسعيه غير مقبول. His efforts, his attempts, his strife would not be accepted. And the Quran also affirms this. In one of the verses, Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا And we made all his a'mal, his good deeds, his worship, as flying dust in the air. All vanished, went for wow. nothing. So accepting the wilayah of Ahlul Bayt alayhi is the core, is the foundation for the acceptance of the a'mal, for the acceptance of the worship and ibadat. So important. So that's the main condition and the first condition for fasting to be a Muslim and also to be a, a mu'min follower of Ahlul Bayt that's the first uh, main condition and criteria for fasting the second criteria is fasting is that the one should be sane okay. aqil. Mm -hmm. and um, in other words if an insane fast then the fasting would not be accepted from that person because okay. he's insane. So you're saying that an individual has to have a conscious willingness to fast using his own intellect and that someone who has due to psychological uh, and medical reasons who does not come to a conclusion to fast in the Ramadan for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his fast will not be accepted. Exactly, as I've mentioned, that one of the criteria as well is to, ha to be balig. Yes. In reaching the age of adolescence, so that's important. So it's all to do with intellect and um, to do with um, reaching that puberty uh, period and age. So the one can deduce and can differentiate between the right and the wrong. So the insanity to be a child, for example, as a wajib amal won't be accepted. As I've said, for the children, they will get some kind of rewards, you know, the parents, for example, yes. but it won't be accepted as amal, as a wajib amal, mm -hmm. because wajib has not been subscribed on them. So yes. they are still ch children in that age. And also the one who is drunk, okay. the one who is drunk, um, fasting won't be accepted. So there's a link here with uh, insanity and having consciousness uh, control over your mind um, if you don't have it you can't fast whether it's to do with insanity or whether it's to do with intoxication exactly that exactly. is not accepted 
that that's the rule exactly you must be fully aware of what you've been doing so that's that's why for example in europe you're not allowed or all over the world you're not allowed to drive if you're drunk yes because you will harm people and harm yourself and you don't have control so that's uh, the second criteria with regard to fasting the third criteria is the remaining impurity from janaba when waking up in the fajr prayer time so important uh, for uh, the male person to make sure that he is tahir, he's pure from the hadat of janabah before the adhan of fajr goes on. So it's important that um, do the ghusl of janabah and then enter into the, the daylight and the daytime of uh, the month of Ramadan and being pure. Because that's ibadah. You want to start fasting in the state of purity. Awesome. You don't start uh, f uh, fasting or even praying and you are in that state of <coughs> impurity, even spiritually. Because Janaba spiritually mainly yes. makes you um, impure. impure yes. Although if you wash yourself without the ghusl, the, you know, the, um, the mentioned ghusl, um, you become pure, but still you have to do the exact shari ghusl. Okay. So that's number three with regard to the conditions. Now, the fourth one, not being a traveler. So okay, for so those who go travel mm -hmm, and the musafir who must do qasr prayer to shorten his prayer, he must also sto um, stop fasting and breaks his fast. So if you uh, travel a distance uh, from your own hometown, then you have to break your fast, halas. You're not allowed to, uh, to fast oh, in this the, case. The, the, there's further rules on that, and inshallah we'll have our own episode on, on the traveller to exactly. discuss the ahkam for a traveller. Uh, but the default position is, if you are travelling and your salah is qasr, you don't, pray, uh, you don't keep your fast. Exactly. As long as you, you don't pray uh, the full salah and you have to pray qasr, then you have to break your fast as well. Um, number five is not having an illness which harms the individual. Again, we have to make sure that the illness is, is severe, it's serious. Okay. You know, you can't just say I have, I have a flu or a cold uh, and you know, um, I feel tired, exhausted. Mm -hmm. I can't continue fasting. No, it has to be serious um, illness which, which harms the person. So as in the fasting would lead to further harm. Whereas we know if you have a flu or a cold or a fever, um, fasting, um, won't actually make that illness any more severe than it is. However, certain diseases and conditions, fasting can actually cause detrimental effect uh, towards that. For example, something like in the stomach where the acidity is too high and if you refrain from eating, that could get worse and could have a very, very uh, detrimental effect on yourself. Or, you know, fasting wouldn't be prescribed for that person. But if it's something that fasting will, will not affect or cause it to get any severe, then you are allowed to fast. Yes, sir, Sheikh? No? Exactly. As, as you've mentioned, uh, that it has to be a condition which harms the person. You know, some people faint if they fast for, if they don't yeah. eat anything or drink for more than four hours. They'll, they'll fall, just fall down mm -hmm. on the floor and they can't continue, for example. The blood pressure goes up and down, yes. for example, severely. So they need to, well, if they are um, um, severely ill, then they can break their fast and pay fidya, as I mentioned yes. in the in previous, previous episodes. Episode, yes. um, so that's uh, the, f the fifth condition. And for those who um, uh, need to fast, they make sure that they can fast. They it have is, the ability. ability. Ah, so it's not actually to do with health, it's more to do with the ability. The ability of fasting, yeah. Yes. So that's important. Ascent, Sheikh, very nice. And what about um, the sixth condition and criteria? Number six, that not being in the state of unconsciousness, and okay. the one who faints, as I've mentioned uh -huh. earlier, um, till the Adhan of Dhuhr time, till the midday. Because in that state, um, the, um, the fasting will be void, will be batil. Okay. And then you have to do the qada. And if you go, you faint after Dhuhr Asr. So I prayed Dhuhr, I prayed Asr. It's getting a bit too hot for me, Sheikh. And I feel I collapse, uh, I go unconscious. What happens then? What the Sayyid says that if the person faints and the timing is between the 
ظهر ان عصر تايم سو ليت سي هي فينتس ات 10 اوكلوك ان ذا مورنينج اند هي ويكس اب ات 2 اوكلوك ان ذا افتنون اوكي سو اف هي باسز ذا نون تايم ذا ميد داي تايم ذا اذان الظهر تايم اند هي ستيل فينتينج ذن هيز فاست ويل بي فويد اند باطل اند هاز تو ري دو ذا قضاء اوف ذات فاستينج احسن ثانك يو فيري ماتش شيخنا اند ثانك يو تو اول ذا فيورز هو بين جوينين اس اند واتشينج احكام اس او اس ان شاء الله ذا بروجرامز هاف بين فيري بينيفيشال تووردز يور سيلف And we do have more program, programs coming every day, insha'Allah. So please join us again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.